Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. So today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw some weapons or a weapon or we'll see if we can get to a couple. But if nothing else, I'll just show you the, the basic fundamentals of, you know, drawing some kind of modern weapon or something like that. And, you know, there's no right or wrong way. Uh, I guess there's a, a bit of a more of a right way if you're doing uh, a realistic depiction. But here we're just going to have fun and create something. So what I'll generally do is start off with a rough sketch. Um, if I feel myself struggling a bit, like I say in a lot of other videos, I'll go to a profile shot. But if not, if it's something I think I kind of have a, a better visual guide to or, you know, put a little exclamation point here in the <laughs> middle of the barrel there, uh, then I'll just kind of go for it. So let's just say that, you know, I think there's this bigger kind of... Uh, you know the the output of the device uh, pointing towards camera you know I'm drawing obviously going right back into perspective on a downward angle uh, as I draw this and generally what I do is I just start off with some some basic you know building blocks of the design and then I start adding things to you know maybe the side uh, maybe a clip off the bottom uh, you know, some kind of handle or, you know, maybe it's so modern it doesn't even need a handle. So there's really no rules to doing a futuristic weapon or, you know, creating your own design. And that's what I typically go for because I just like, you know, just using my imagination to come up with something and maybe it comes out cool, maybe it doesn't, but that's where logging in lots of uh, sketches will help you, you know, fine tune that and get better at doing stuff like this and you know, some will be good and some you'll hide from the world. You know, you just don't want anybody to see how bad one of your sketches came out. <laughs> that happens every now and then. So, but there's nothing wrong with that. It takes some bad sketches to get to a good one. So, you know, so I just play around with these shapes. Now, one of the fun things about doing something like this, like you see it's overly blocky still, but it's not as blocky as it started. So I just have to keep adding to that. And uh, another way to do this is to say, okay, these are all just blocked in areas, but where can I add some angles? Could I take this and instead of this being straight up and come into a 90, maybe there's these little uh, areas where it cuts over a bit more. And I'm not trying to draw uh, in perspective correctly at this point. I don't need to. This is more a design process. So in this process, I'll just kind of sketch, you know, and just really figure it out and say, ah, oh, you know, maybe this front part just looks too flat. You know, let's try rounding it out just a little bit uh, by adding these little rounded connector lines. So each each little thing that you add can kind of, you know, keep getting the design a little bit more refined. Maybe a drop shadow in here. Maybe a drop shadow in here just to try to convey depth. Some line worker shading right here. So just little, little design choices like this. This probably has a you're going to see a little bit of the space back here where it recedes back. Maybe this has some lines to fill that in. Um, and, you know, past that, it's just adding little segments and pieces and, and uh, you know, and studying, um, you know, some real guns uh, or firearms or whatever um, to, uh, to get ideas for it. Uh, rocket launchers and, and, you know, sidearms to, like... Uh, I like looking at those mech design warrior type stuff. And, you know, some people come up with some really amazing designs for that. Um, you know, and then you just have to keep breaking it down. So, for instance, if I take this, I should probably draw this larger. Just so you can see. I know a lot of people like to watch stuff on mobile devices now. So, I probably draw it too small on the screen for that. Um, so, yeah. So, like, say, well, let's say that we have, like, the firing mechanism back this way. Um, I almost picture like a gun like this would need a front handle as well instead of this clip. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say that it doesn't even have a clip right there. And let's flip that around and turn that into, uh, or just straight down and turn that into just a, a front grip. So something like this and some little lines across there. And as quickly as that, we got kind of a, a grip kind of thing. And then you know, you have to start looking at things. Okay, I added this angle here, so there's going to be an angle back here. Um, and this area looks, you know, just a, a bit too plain. All this uh, this kind of area right there uh, looks very boring and, and very plain. So it's like, well, how do I add something to that, you know? Because, you know, 
I could just add like say little designs like this and keep adding little pieces on top of pieces but uh, which it, it's not bad it does a little bit for it but it doesn't you know it's not what I'm not not what I'm thinking or not what I'm after so let me go back here and let me try let's try an indent let's start with that so I'll take uh, another shape not quite a square I'll put it a little bit in a perspective or an angle I'll put an indent going like this and then some more lines like this that kind of go kind of with these lines a little bit or whatever so to me that's that's another way to add elements as well you know not always thinking um, materials protruding out you know maybe segments going in so let's try that again right here let's do another indent another kind of uh, angle and we'll indent that in right there maybe we'll do the lines again So I, you know, and I don't want it to be too repetitive of the same thing, but you know, we're just experimenting here. We're just designing our, our, uh, our creation here. So we just have to play around with a variety of things. Maybe instead of a, an exclamation point kind of layout like we have here, maybe I, uh, erase this and, you know, try, um, try one of, you know, a, a different opening down here, but we'll try it in more of an angular, almost like a V shape or something. We'll do something like that. So it's really just playing around with all these different concepts and changing things around, you know, umpteen times until you get something you like. Uh, and then once you, you know, you, you get it pinpointed design-wise of what you think would look cool, uh, then you can start fixing your perspective and things like that and really get in here and clean it up. So we'll do that, but I'll, I'll first get, uh, you know, I still want this thing to look a bit cooler. Um, so let's duplicate this. Let's move it over. Let's take the first one and scale it down. Uh, I always think it's important to do this. I probably should have started with the very blocky form of it. Uh, but it's an important process to do what you're seeing here uh, as far as making these changes um, step by step and then really looking at it from a whole. You know, you can step back and kind of, uh, you know, you can stop right here and kind of just study it for a bit. Um, and I think you learn a lot from that process. So. Try that out with your work and see if that helps you. You know, I had somebody ask me a question in, a, uh, I think it was a live stream or something I did. And it was like, you know, I feel myself stagnating and uh, I can't seem to push past that next level in my art. And I kind of thought about that more and more and I figured I would address that a little bit more in this video. So if you ask that question, hopefully you're watching. Uh, sorry if I can't do a shout out on the name. I not good with remembering stuff like that during the live streams and all that. But anyways, uh, so essentially what I would say there is like just to, to remember that that happens regardless in, in whatever field you're in. Definitely a lot more, in, I would say, in creative design fields and, and probably singing, songwriting, you know, anything creative like that. Um, but, but here's what happens, I think. If you can kind of reinvent yourself as much as possible... Uh, try as many different things, study from different creative people that you admire, uh, reinvigorate yourself, or mainly reinvent yourself constantly uh, when you're doing this stuff, that it's real easy to draw the same thing over and over again. I, I find myself doing it constantly. I'm, I'm doing it right now. And so what I have to do is just really try something different. Uh, and one way that I would do that is like, say, I'm designing this and I feel it heading in a very traditional way. Uh, something that I do way too much, uh, I can try to just change it up entirely. And that means like, for instance, that everything I see here is very organic, right? So I could, or I'm sorry, angular, not organic. There's almost no organic lines in here. Uh, so what I would do is maybe try to throw some organic lines in there and, and maybe just really change it up altogether, you know? So what I could do to break that kind of habit forming drawing process is try Let's add another layer. Let's try another one. And let's try to do, I'll start out still with a basic perspective. And I'll even keep it the same overall shape, right? So it's almost identical to what we got over here in this rectangular boring gun, really, you know. Uh, but what I'll do now is I'll try to just really change it. So looking at this one, I'll say I'll start with some forward facing lines for the opening. And, you know, maybe I don't even want it to be all boring and rectangular like that. Uh, I want to use more organic lines, so let me try more of an kind of an oval sweeping line here, an oval sweeping line here. Uh, you know, just 
I'm immediately going to try to throw in some organic lines. And I don't know which ones of these will stick, if any of them. But I just want to make sure that I don't just trace the same steps that I did right there. And the reason why I'm using this in, as an example is that it's very easy to just do the same thing over and over again and expect to get better. And it doesn't always happen that way. So you got to try new things. And, you know, the main thing is just keep drawing all the time. And some of this stuff will start to make more and more sense as you progress. But to try to reinvent yourself uh, and your style and the way that you uh, construct things. And just really think outside the box. You know, it doesn't have to be one way or another. It, there's just lots of ways to create this stuff. So um, just play around with as, as many ideas as possible. And uh, I'm sure something will come of it for you. So hopefully that helps. I, I know that can be really frustrating to get in that, that uh, rut. And to go, well, when am I really going to improve? But the other thing to keep in mind with that, just so you know, is that sometimes it does happen all at once. Uh, I'll, I'll hit areas, uh, sh strides or whatever in my uh, artwork, art process, and all of a sudden things will just, seems like doors just unlock mentally and, and things just really start to work. Um, you know, I can't attest to when that will happen and why. It just, I, I think that it's from staying with it and not giving up. And then um, certain days you just kind of get in the zone and and uh, things start to make sense. It's why you can look back at your old sketches and just totally get, you know, upset, I guess, or happy and upset at the same time. It's kind of a mixed emotion because you, you look at it and you go, man, that stuff sucked. What was I thinking? But then you got to get happy and go, oh, I really moved past that, you know. And, and I don't know that you always identify with when that really happens but you definitely can always look back at your old work and that should inspire you hopefully it does so uh, so yeah so good luck on that sorry I can't remember the uh, exact name of the person um, so yeah so right here you know you see it's it's heading in a different direction it still has that basic um, design though even though I used all these organic shapes and I haven't detailed it nearly as much but it it has this kind of similar uh, overall feel so what does that tell us? That the basic underlying structure did still uh, transpose into the, the finished, uh, or it's not finished, but, you know, the sketch of this. So let's try something else. Let's bring this up here. So now we'll try to change up the basic underlying shape quite a bit. So we're not going to use the basic boring rectangle. Uh, let's try, uh, let's see, let's try to, hmm, what other shape could we use? Well, let's just try to immediately change it up. Let's put like this pyramid shape right here. And let's even have it um, get a lot more narrow to the back here. I don't know if this will work, but again, this is experimenting and doing something that doesn't feel comfortable and doesn't feel like a safe zone in my drawing. So let's try this and then let's try... I don't know. Let's just try throwing like a a block shape back here. Or maybe another little offshoot of a triangular shape, but just a little wedge shape back there. I don't even know if I'll be able to make sense of this, but uh, I got to try something. And we'll try another shape here. Okay, so that's, that's all I want to add for like angular shapes, because I also don't want it to be too angular like the first one. So now I'm going to get in here and try to use some organic shapes, some flowing lines, and change this up a bit. So let's just do like a, I don't know, we'll throw an oval right here. It always seems like ovals make more sense for uh, the front of the gun, but maybe not. And I did like the little sweeping lines back here, so I'll try those again. You know, something like this. And maybe this one will look really alien, you know. Like the, the thing that I try to think about when doing this stuff is that, you know, imagine you were on a... Um, you know, a different world, and you, you were seeing things for the first time that you've never seen, and you wouldn't know what to make sense of them as. So so you want to get a little bit of that feeling into, you know, your future or modern work, because, you know, who knows what's going to be really be uh, way offset in the future. There's no telling. I mean, we could you know, totally reinvent something, and there's no need to be in the same confinements that it was originally designed in. So that's something to think about. But there's another thing to think about is the fact that if it doesn't relate well to the viewer, 
uh, viewing your work, like they don't know what it is because it's just so weird and crazy, <laughs> then it might not work as well because they're going to go, I don't know what that is. Why are they wielding it like it's a gun? It looks like a toaster or whatever. You know, it's got to it's got to make some sense. So um, so that's that's the other thing to keep in mind with that. You know, so you want to have this fun with it and make it look really crazy and wild. But then it's got to have a little bit of basis uh, of realism or whatever. Um, or it might just be confusing. Like what I think I'm pretty much drawing here. But so, OK, so we got this different. Uh, kind of output of the you know blast thing area and then you know we've got this weird shape back here I don't really know what to make sense of it maybe it comes up and it's some kind of scope so we'll try that so the other neat thing about doing uh, you know this type of stuff is that you can just really add on lots of parts and lots of uh, additional shapes you know because it's it's uh this techie stuff it's real easy to do that so you can just kind of get in here and just keep adding little design elements um, just trying not to make a handle maybe it's something um, I'm trying to think one of the games that I played that's it's been so long I don't play games anymore but uh, uh, or as much as I should probably um, but it had like two handles so I'll, I'll make this handle offshoot even though from this angle we don't really see the other handle I guess it would be back over here somewhere but It'd be kind of neat, like almost like a, a gun where you hold two handles off to the side, and maybe it's even got some kind of wild chest brace or something, you know. So it goes like this, and you know, you just press it against your chest when you shoot the weapon or something, you know, whatever. And this is just me thinking out loud as I'm trying to come up with something new and different, and and again, just not fall into the same boring uh, tempo or you know design that I did there um, so yeah so it's mixing up some organic shapes and maybe there's this recessed area here where you can see like you know maybe like the liquid or something that goes through it you know I'm starting to think like uh, I'm almost thinking like Doom or, or not Doom what was it um, Unreal Tournament God, I used to love playing that game and they had all the cool weapons this actually reminds me of one of them actually um, and you know and that's another thing for for reference i mean goodness all you got to do is look at games like that for a uh, weapon reference because they really you know they really made some cool stuff i wonder what that's even up to i'm gonna have to look into that that was a that was a really fun game to play get lost in all right so let me see and i kind of need to make sense of this it's just a bunch of scribbly gook over here um but, you know, sometimes that's that's nice, too, you know, especially when you're still designing uh, to just throw in some some rough lines, you know, some really some scribbles that don't make a whole lot of sense. And then uh, sometimes you'll kind of look into your work a bit and find something that looks cool in there. So I think that actually this is the still part of the scope. All right. And I just kind of keep going and detailing and throwing in some techie lines here and there. You know, start getting into just a little bit of shading. And then obviously like a, you know, soft erase and a refinement. Yeah, and like anything else, whenever I do uh, things like this, I just log them and save them. So I might sit here and draw 10 little, you know, quick sketches of guns, refine one or two of them, and then I log them and then move on to the next subject matter. So that's that's really all I do, you know, it's uh, to get better at this stuff and to, to figure it out. And it's just a matter of sticking with it and... Uh, not getting bored or you know sometimes you do get bored and that's okay but then uh, come back to it or uh, or just fight through it sometimes that's a kind of a good eye-opener to what you need to do with your art you know like just really stick with it even though you're like zoning out you know try to get inspired and come back and then but finish it and uh, 
that that's more on like the work ethic of being an artist but i think it's really important and we might even just do a a video just on that subject matter because i think it's something that often gets overlooked by people that want to illustrate and draw for a living they think that well i can just do it because i'm really good at drawing and uh it's not that easy unfortunately it's uh i mean that is the basic understanding of it but it's um there's so much more when it comes to you know sticking with anything and being good at something and doing it for a living and mixing in the idea of of um, work and money and all that unfun stuff that goes with it uh, but that's where making yourself finish this type of stuff will show you a lot uh, mainly because you know you got to remember that you're not always going to get to draw exactly what you'd like to draw that day and you got to be able to deal with that um, effectively so yeah we might save that for another video topic so so yeah if you notice here I'm just trying to clean it up a bit add in I'm still trying to change things a little bit just because I, I don't want it to look too boring and you know it's, to this this stuff all looks very angular and boring and and if you notice I went a little bit too far back to the angular stuff so I'm trying to put some organic lines in there as I as I go uh, also remember line weight is a good thing even with weaponry to show difference so if you notice that heavy line right there just gave it a lot more depth same thing I could probably do that again here and a, a nice heavy shadow there and I'm gonna be able to create depth in these little these little recessed areas so remember to do that as well uh, remember to use line breaks you don't have to have every line connect everywhere uh, line breaks are a handy way to make your line work um, uh, stand out in different ways I'll just try to get a little bit more of this uh, design stuff in here. I kind of like these little openings right here. Maybe they, you know, light up or something. Maybe they don't, you know, but that's, you kind of figure that out when you take it to the color. And then right here, I kind of like this shape right here just to make it different, you know, because it's so easy to go, well, this, this kind of looks right, you know, um, but it, it looks a little too boring or a little too uh, typical. So let's try to try to use the, these bottom pieces, but let's try to change it up a bit. I don't want to just draw a diamond at the bottom right there. So let's do, let's try uh, segmenting them. See if this looks all right. I think it will, but you never know until you try. So I'll do these little segments. Maybe I'll just do two. So I'll do two little segments right here like this. And then I'll have a you know connector piece because they're they're probably not just floating there. So there's a little connection, and then and that's it. And then we'll go right to the bottom piece here. So it just gives it a little bit more, I don't know, area of interest or something. And maybe I'll recreate that kind of effect even with these little pieces here. So something like that. And let's take this and go back right here, here. I don't know, a little separation there. I get a little bit crazy with these little separation pieces like this, just because they're easy. Again, that's my that's me going to my safe zone, you know, when I draw. But uh, but they're easy, and I think they convey the kind of techie look pretty well. Uh, so I put a lot of those in. I'm gonna ignore this line down here. I'll probably just erase that, just so it doesn't get too distracting. Because uh, I want it to taper back. I just want it to look uh, like it's not just a square object like these ones over here. And then this opening for the um, liquid or whatever we're going to say just looks a bit boring. So let me see if I can spruce that up a bit. So I want this oval opening like this. But then I don't like how it's just got this boring big chunk. I don't know. It just, it just looks pretty, not well thought out. Um, so let me see if I can figure out a way to fix that. Uh, let's see, how would I do that? I do want it to look recessed, but I just don't want it to be so plain. Um, how can we do that? Let me just sketch this line in so I can look at it and analyze it. I mean, the easy thing is just to do line breaks, you know, like this. Um, so we'll do that, but then also I'll add in another little kind of trim piece or recess or something like this. So it's a little better, but it's still kind of weak. Um, maybe this comes down here, 
connects. Um, I don't know. That does look still looks pretty boring. Now, aside from you know, I could do something like this where maybe it has like a a hose that connects right here, you know, with a little trim piece around that, and that goes to another part of the gun for whatever reason, which seems just really dangerous and <laughs> uh, maybe just just inappropriate. But but uh, you know, because then like all oh, somebody shoots that and explodes. Who knows? Why is there even a window on it? Just because you can see the cool liquid beneath it. But we'll just say it's enough. So I'll put the little uh, glaring lines or whatever, little glossy lines, so that you remember that's a, a little window or something. So, and then there's that. You know, I would have liked to make that look cooler, but I guess I can't <laughs> think of anything right now. It's probably because I'm drawing and talking, and I have a hard time, like, walking and chewing gum. So it's, uh, that's what you get. That's my, that's my little window there. All right, so let's move on. So this part here... Do some more little techie lines on this and a little opening there for the, the site. And you can notice I didn't use uh, Sketchbook Pro's really awesome perspective tools. I could have. Uh, the only reason I don't, I probably would for my, say, my ink work or something or my, my last rendition. Um, but I, the only reason I didn't is it's such a short perspective that I can kind of fake it on this one. Uh, but keep in mind, they're real easy to use. You just would grab this. This would be a, a one-point perspective. So you just pull this back to where the line, the lines line up like this. Um, and there's only going to be a few spots, really, on something like this where you're going to use it. But you could do a few of these uh, perspective guides to help you with that process. But like I said, I don't feel like I really need it here. It's, it's a pretty basic design. Uh, but, you know, they are there if you need them. So let's have this come out. Uh, let's let's have a, a little. I'm getting sick of putting a, a rectangular end on everything. So let me let me put like these little points off the edge of this. Um, so all I'm doing is I'm trying to add a little bit of shape even to the bezel areas, just so it doesn't look so so plain Jane, you know. So. And I don't even know how this thing connects. Maybe it just drops down right through the middle of here. Something like that. Now the other thing that's that's fun and uh, kind of neat to do with stuff like this, uh, you see it's it still looks pretty boring. Like there's just not enough... Uh, uh, difference in the I mean there's there's plenty of design elements I think um, even though this this probably needs to be something that comes out like this way um, so it doesn't look like everything just goes back just like this you know and that's that's the thing that I'm not liking about the design that it does it still has this feeling that everything's just going like that which is boring um, but you know if we could make more of it stand out on, on different angles then it's going to be more impressive now the other thing is that you also want to get in here and, and show some difference in the materials. So for instance, like this could be darkened in. Like this, maybe it's like a darker liquid. You get those little glare lines and you can do like some of this little cross hatching or line work at the bottom to show a, a, a roundedness to that oval piece. Uh, maybe this whole top section right here is a darker, you know, material. So you could you could fill that in. Um, I don't know if I want to make that piece. I guess some of the, generally I'll start with my drop shadows first and then kind of work into there. But yeah, I think I will. So I think I'd take this and just fill this in a bit more. So like this. You know, and you could just draw the lines and throw your little X's in there if you're going to ink it. But uh, I don't think I'll have time to ink this one. So we'll just go ahead and fill it in just to show you what I'm talking about. But I think that doing this also helps your um, your materials look really, uh, you know, give it a little bit more depth so that everything's not all the same material, all the same, uh, you know, vividness on the, on the page or whatever. So just get in the habit of shading some of these in or filling some of these in. And uh, that kind of helps, you know, change it up a bit.
And it doesn't have to all be filled in like that. It could be, let's try this. Let's have the front filled in, but then on the sides here, we could have it like dark on the, um, the parts where it changes angle. And then just some lines. You know, so real easy, you know, but it just gives it a little bit more to look at. Almost makes it look a little bit specular right there. So it's still a dark material, but tiny little bit of uh, specularity. And, you know, just you just play around with that concept and go all around your design and, and throw some of that in. All right. And then up here, maybe I'll have this connect with something just because it looks like it would just get broke off or something. So I'll give it a little bit more of a support right there. All right, I feel a little bit better about that now. And as far as this part comes back, we'll say that, I don't know, it just comes back here. These will say they're wider and they taper down. So you see, I'm each time I'm trying to just make these small changes to what I'm doing to give it a little bit more uh, of an uh, overall effect. You know, so I, I just, I always feel like it, as I'm drawing, I just got to keep trying to improve the piece. So if I wanted to improve this, I would shade it down. I would try it again. I would try to make some more changes and um, erase some things down and, and maneuver. Um, you should always be able to get a little bit more out of your sketch each time. Uh, you will kind of hit a, uh, a standstill at some point before you need to do a total redraw. But it's, uh, it's good to see how far you can really keep changing the ideas and taking it. Yeah, I think that one's a bit too short. And and this is where, uh, you know, I would fix things with perspective. So, for instance, this chest piece looks like it's, it's, it is out of perspective. But the way I would fix that is I would draw, like, the perspective lines back. And I'd create a square. Uh, and I would crisscross the lines. And that would tell me exactly where these need to go. So, you basically do, like, this kind of thing in perspective. So, I'll just keep that in mind. And then you can keep dividing that. This is a perspective trick, and you can keep finding center, and this works perspectively for anything you do. So you just keep going and going and going. I hope you can see that repetitiveness there. Uh, and that works in any perspective, and we'll find center and angles for, for things like that. But again, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just kind of showing you the way I would design something like this. So we'll, uh, we'll save that for another video as well. So here I'm just trying to... Throw in some little designy stuff and get something different looking out of it, but it's looking kind of just weird. I don't know. Just scribbling. Well, sometimes I do that too. Sometimes I try to just mindlessly create something <laughs> and try not to think about it. Let's see if I can make something work. But yeah, so that's that's about it. Um, that's what I wanted to show you anyway. So how you could try to design some uh, you know modern looking weapons, and it, it just doesn't stop here. You just keep going with it. Uh, you start getting in some of your little rendering and your specularity type stuff. So you can get in here and start shading it. Maybe I bring this. Uh, think of it like a body line almost to this this weapon. Bring that out some more. And you know this is where you just have fun and. And make it look shiny and maybe there's some uh, carbon fiber type looking material on the handle grip or whatever you know so you get some of that in there uh, and you just keep going and going until you call it done and that's it so that's how I would design some weapons uh, I wanted to make sure I got this video to you guys because I know I've lately been uh, so busy with a lot of different things that I haven't been able to do as many how to draw this how to draw that so there's my, uh, my how to draw video for how to draw modern weapons. Um, so hopefully that's giving you some ideas and you can start messing around and creating your own. And uh, let me know what you thought of the video and what you'd like to see in the future. And as always, I appreciate you stopping by and watching. Uh, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.